Let's get educated. That's why we're here, to bring you the stories impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses. It's time for a little education. Hello everyone, it is I, Katie Patrick, again, as always, joined by Mr. David Fiorazzo. Now, before we get started, I want to tell you about a brand new program that we are launching on Thursday, this week, Yay. very shortly. It's called After School Special, and David and I will be joined by Dr. Dupesta and Dr. Jake Jacobs for a fun discussion about all of the different things, and let me tell you, <clears throat> it's going to be delightful. Yeah, two doctors on the, Ooh, fancy. the program with us. Anyway, since we're launching this new program, we want to hear from you. So we want to encourage you to check out stayeducated.org and send us your questions. Seriously, tune in at 7 p.m. Thursday, that's 7 Central, to check out our first episode of After School Special. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, Katie. I think it will be as well. <laughs> All right, a Christian school in Jacksonville, Florida is in hot water without a ducky after a second grade class was given homework to send pictures of themselves whilst reading in the bathtub and the school is now blaming parents for making this an issue like david i mean we're just asking you to send pictures of your children in the bathtub reading what's the big deal what could go wrong i want to re i want to start with the reply from the school we have been sending this homework assignment for years, and you're the only one complaining about it. Well, we'll see how they handled that one parent that complained, but the headline is, Christian School wants photos of eight-year-olds in bathtub fights dirty when parents object. Let's check out the video. Misty and Christopher Dunham were shocked to see their eight-year-old's homework assignment earlier this week. Proceeded to read to me that she needed to do her reading homework in the bathtub. I sent a picture of her doing it and specifically told her to stop and you will not. This is a picture of that homework assignment. Parents are supposed to sign off on the homework, but the Dunhams noted that their daughter would not be taking part in that activity. Emailed the teacher, hey, you may want to explain this, send something out to the parents, let them know what the intentions are. This just does not sound okay. She did send a message saying you should be in pajamas, be in your uniform, have fun with it. Um, but I, it didn't set right. Misty reached out to the school administration and later to police to document the incident. The report says the parents were told by administrators, quote, we have been sending this homework assignment for years and you're the only one complaining about it. Police advised the parents not to take the photo. Later, the Dunham family says they got a call from the school. I think you guys should do a parental withdrawal for Mackenzie. And I said, I can't, I can't. I can't do that. And we we refuse to withdraw her. And he said, "Okay, then I thank you for saying that." And continued on saying, "Well, we're going to proceed with an administration withdrawal." This is the paperwork the Dunham family picked up today, indicating their daughter is no longer a student at Victory Christian Academy. No explanation. The Dunhams believe this sends the wrong message in two ways. A bathtub is not appropriate for a child to take a picture. She did something right by telling mom and dad that she wasn't comfortable with something, and now she is no longer in school over it. Katie, you have young wow. ones at home. I'm going to defer to you, um, even if the kids are clothed, in the bathtub, I'm confused by this whole thing. It's Victory Christian Academy. <laughs> so called. No victory for them. I, I, yes. I, and I, when I read this, I was like, okay, all they needed to do is say in the assignment, hey, in p your pajamas with the teddy bear, like make it silly. But even then, it's just kind of like, why? 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 Doing your homework. Why? 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 And homework is fun, I guess, why? is the idea, right? Um, but the fact that the school decided to double down and basically triple down and then kick the kid out of the school for not wanting to take a picture in the bathtub. It, it, we need good Christian schools out there. I do not recommend this school. You're supposed to read, you know, you, you had some Bible verses <clears throat> to read there, but you also had to take a picture of yourself in the bathtub. So it's like you're getting the mixed messages. Yeah, I, I just don't understand that. Um, what I don't like is the way they responded. Mm -hmm. Um, do a parental withdrawal for the child, and then when Mr. refused to withdraw her daughter, the, admi the administrator said the school was going to proceed with 
and administration withdrawal. That means that they do it anyway? They kicked the kid out of school. Now, what I want to know is do the parents get that tuition money back? Because as a private Christian school, you you know they're going to want to collect that money. So do the, this, did the family get a, a refund? Well, this is the beginning of the school year, right? So this is they already paid, I'm guessing. Yep. So uh, I don't know. Let's. So uh, I would love to see, see a follow up on this. this but yeah, I, I just don't understand that. I, I guess it's all about fun and let's do it in the bathtub. Hey, do do your homework in the bathtub. Submerge it underwater and bring up and see if you can read any of you, anything you wrote once you take it out. Of, but just it doesn't. It's unnecessary. Well, and considering uh, also on that little assignment sheet of all the things that they had to do, you know, fun with friends, pages one twelve to one thirteen. Maybe fun with friends was supposed to be, I don't know, are they going to be sharing the pictures of <clears throat> them in the tub? It makes absolutely no sense. But the one thing I do enjoy is that they do have phonics, a phonics test, which yeah. means maybe that means they're teaching phonics. So there's yeah. something going on and they are supposed to practice, you know, Psalm 24, one to two with their adults. So at least they're trying to memorize verse, but why? Let, I guess... Let us know. Yeah, yeah. What We're tell? confused. That's a good parents. idea. Stayeducated.org. Yes. Message us. What are your thoughts on this one? Because over here we're kind of like just, just, just why? Yeah, we we have to we have to emphasize that the school now did not say get in the bathtub and take a bath and then send us pictures doing your homework. They didn't go that far. They didn't say that. But the whole, it's a just a disturbing idea in the bathtub. So stayeducated.org. Send us your thoughts on how you would respond or whatever. So still to come, though, we got to move on. And Oklahoma Children's Hospital ends gender medicine services Huzzah. after the state threatens to pull millions in funding. Woohoo! That's next. Stay with us. If you have a smartphone, tablet, Roku, or Apple TV, consider downloading the Freedom Project media app. It's 100% free and includes all of our weekly shows, plus lecture series, archive programs, and award-winning animated videos for families like the Presidential Minute, Battles of America, and Heroes of the West. Don't rely on the social media giants to keep you informed. Simply download the Freedom Project media app from your app store and allow notifications. And we'll let you know when a new video is ready. In the middle of flyover, uh, country exists a little state that has a city that has a hospital <laughs> that realizes the error of its ways. I'm talking about Oklahoma Children's Hospital, which announced it's planning to halt certain gender medicine services in order to keep funding for its new pediatric mental health facility. In other words, they are not going to trans the kids. They are not going to. So OU <laughs> Health actually said in a statement that the legislature restricted the use of the funds from benefiting facilities performing certain gender medicine services. The new mental health and behavioral health facility was never intended to provide such care. The OU Health senior leadership team is proactively planning the ceasing of certain gender medicine services across our facilities, and that plan is already under development. Can we take a moment? Yes, the applause. Thank you. Thank um, you. Thank you. Yeah, they were going to lose $39.4 million in oh, a, is American that Rescue Plan, plan funds. Um, where, first, where, where does that money come from? What were, were those? Uh, well, that's a house bill that they had with uh, Oklahoma going on. So, wow. Yeah. It, it would require the hospital to stop offering gender surgeries in order to keep their funding. So is this being driven by money yes yes it is <laughs> so trans the kids or you would lose 39.4 million dollars and they went with the money so no transing of the kids then they get their money and that money as they even said is supposed to be going to the mental health facility portion uh not doing actual gender surgeries and, and all of that. So the Oklahoma Children's Hospital website said it currently offers a variety of different gender services, including pausing puberty, managing what? gender affirming hormone therapy, and helping find surgeons who perform gender affirming oh, surgeries. Not no more, it won't. What, what? All right, well, 
State Republican Representative Randy Randleman, poor guy, Randy Randleman emphasized that behavioral health is the priority right now. It's not cutting anybody out for services, he said. It's saying we have such a need for behavior problems and families being dysfunctional that we want this individual money to be focused on that to get us back to where we should be. So what you're saying is we should actually focus on the real issues that are going on with our families and mental health to try and heal what is happening there and then maybe all these other things that we've been jumping to is automatically cutting our children up there's no need for it because we're helping them on this end i think that's what randy rander randleman is trying to say here yeah johnny johnson and pete peterson said the same thing but anyway (laughs) kevin west said i'm thankful for language in this bill that protects children from the practice of mutilation through gender reassignment medical treatment. This unbelievably harmful practice cannot be reversed and has lasting physical and psychological consequences that damage children for the rest of their lives. I believe we we have got a video on this as well. We firmly believe that when trans children are denied best practice medical care, it is nothing short of life-threatening. We don't want to go into something that we don't know enough about yet. GOP lawmakers plan to withhold $39.4 million from OU Health if gender-affirming surgeries are performed there, money meant for a children's mental health facility. And after facing immense pressure, the hospital announced some changes. In a partial statement, from OU Health. The legislature restricted the use of funds from benefiting facilities performing certain gender medicine services. The new mental and behavioral health facility was never intended to provide such care. The OU Health senior leadership team is proactively planning the seizing of certain gender medicine services across our facilities, and that plan is already under development. ACLU of Oklahoma says this bill will be the catalyst for a bigger statewide ban. Representative Randy Randleman, who is also a licensed psychologist, says it's not meant to target trans youth, but to focus on children's mental well-being. Solving the big problem that we have right now, uh, that's where I would want most of the money actually going to, is to help us having more healthy children and healthy families. In a press release, Representative Randleman said unproven, controversial, unchangeable hormonal procedures, including gender reassignment, at a young age can do irreparable physical, mental, and emotional damage to a child. And taxpayer dollars shouldn't support them. Today I asked him how Oklahoma trans families should take this message. It's not cutting anybody out of services. It's saying that we have such a need in behavior problems and families being dysfunctional and everything like that, that we want this individual money to be focused on that to get us back up to where we should be. Thank you, Randy Randleman. Yes, why is this even a debate? It, it, well, because we live in 2022 America. Well, of course, we have a defender being the American Civil Liberties Union of Oklahoma. Uh, the representative, the policy director there, Cindy uh, Guyon, said that legislatures seem to believe that the health care and mental health of trans and 2SLGBTQ plus youth is essentially a bargaining chip they can use. No, 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 that is not what they are doing. But she doesn't care about that now, does she? Well, coming up, new data shows gender clinic referrals have (gasps) doubled in just one year. We'll get into all of it next. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at MyPillow. Save up to 66% on pristine quality bedding, towels, slippers, signature pillows, and much more when you use the code EDUCATED. That's E-D-U-C-A-T-E-D, EDUCATED. Support this show and a great American company. Well, I didn't see it coming, uh, but it's here. (laughs) We have the UK, United Kingdom, which has some data about referrals to gender clinics and... Let's just say it's skyrocketing. Yes, and what happens in the UK doesn't stay in the UK. No, no, it comes all the way across the pond over here. (laughs) Now, according to the most recent data that was released by the Gender Identity Development Service, GIDS, and the UK's Tavistock Center, child and adolescent referrals have doubled Hmm. compared to the previous year. GIDS now estimates that 5,000 plus 
children and adolescents sought gender-related services last year, which is a 112% increase from the 2020-2021 year. Now, GIDS did see a slight dip during the pandemic with 2,401 new referrals compared to recent years of uh, 2,750 plus referrals. And the gender clinic initially reported in their June 2021-2022 data approximately 3,585 new patients patients, but then there was an additional 1,500 referrals that were included in the July press release. So as you can just see from the graphic on the screen, that's a lot of people. That's a mountain they're climbing up basically at this point. And the Society for Evidence-Based Gender Medicine, S-E-G-M, all these acronyms (laughs) they put in it, uh, is an international group of over 100 clinicians and researchers. They released a new graph uh, to illustrate that steep increase, as you saw. Now, the uh, GIDS is reporting exponentially more cases of unknown sex. This is what's so fascinating. So, you know, most of the people had been up until this point saying, okay, male presenting with this or a female presenting. Well, now they're getting these cases of unknown sex, and which makes sense when we're talking about gender dysphoria unknown. here. Unknown. Unknown. Um, it obscures the data, though, because what they're seeing is that adolescent females first began to comprise a majority of these referrals way back in 2012. And as SEGM said, our stacked area chart also shows that adolescent females ages 12 to 17, oh, you mean middle school and high school girls? Yes, continue to dominate the referral activity at 1,759 cases. But a new trend is also emerging. Increasing numbers of referrals are not recorded by natal sex. In 2021, 2022, a total of 779 referrals were unknown sex. 779. So in the UK, (sighs) these are the people who are actually being referred and they don't they don't know what's going on uh why are they saying unknown sex well as the article states it's unclear why the data on natal sex was not recorded one possibility is that the researchers left this data out of their report because they did not distinguish between a patient's sex and self-reported gender identity rendering the data meaningless Uh, another possibility is that sex was not recorded because of the belief held by many gender uh, activists that males and females are meaningless. You know, they're just social, social constructs. constructs. They're just social constructs, David. Oh. Yeah. However, simple incompetence cannot be entirely ruled out. <laughs> I, I am going kind of with the third option for a lot of this. Simple incompetence. What's fascinating to me is, first of all, the unknown. And by the way, I... I I, I'm not an animal. I guess I'm human, but I have no idea what I... Come on, really? I mean, everybody has a conscience. Everybody knows. Um, but the graph in 2020, sometime between 2020 and 2021, that spike when everything went upward, I just it's fascinating to me when you think of what happened with COVID-19. More kids had a lot of time on their hands online, and they, they wanted to get attention maybe and i know that's not the motive of everybody but you want popularity right when you're a teenager or early 20s and so that's why i think a lot of these there was a spike there but it's just interesting that it really went up and so these referrals to me are off the charts and i'm fascinated to see what's going to happen in america I'm, as soon as you see stats on that. Well, and here's the deal. We, we're going to stop being able to see what's happening in the UK because here's something troubling. In July, Britain's National Health Service, National Health Care, uh, announced their plans to close down the Gender Identity and Development Service at the Tavistock Centre in London in spring of 2023. So this upcoming spring. According to a report, employees were pressured to adopt an unquestioning affirmative approach. As a consequence, once children and young people were identified as having gender-related distress, their other mental health needs could be sometimes overlooked. And it makes sense. And so then it's, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Britain. Oh, Britain. (laughs) Let's see what, I guess, happens over here. Well... All right, before we go is up next as we discuss Virgin Atlantic's new campaign aimed at, see, Virgin Atlantic, they fly across the pond here between the UK. Anyway, uh, they're going to discuss a new campaign aimed at bringing in more passengers by allowing male crew members and pilots to, you know, wear skirts so they can express their confused sexuality (laughs) on board. All right, time to depart that airline, people. Now uh, we're going to have that and much more when we return. We want to hear from you. If you have a question or comment for Katie, David, or any of our other show hosts, 
simply visit stayeducated.org. That's stayeducated.org and submit your question or comment. Our team loves to hear from you and might just give you a shout out on air. Again, visit stayeducated.org and connect with us. All right, before we go, Virgin Atlantic has decided to put all of its eggs into the rainbow basket by becoming the most inclusive airline in the skies. For now, what do I mean? Well, make sure your seats and tray tables are in full and upright position because this new woke ad campaign may have you changing airlines. Here we go. I feel fabulous, fierce, and ferocious when I am ready to take flight. Be Yourself campaign means absolutely everything to me. I get to be myself, a non-binary person. I have the choice of a uniform, which is a massively big thing. It's so important. This policy allows everyone to have a seat at the table. It's not taken away from anyone. It's just allowing everyone from the community to just have a voice. It's not about cancelling people. It's not about removing women or removing men. It's just about more inclusive language. Katie, it does allow everyone to have a seat at the table. Um, the tray table. I almost, I burped and almost regurgitated my pumpkin spice coffee from earlier. Ah, okay, so as part of their new inclusive initiative, Virgin Atlantic is allowing its crew and pilots to wear pronoun pins and a variety of approved non-binary clothing, including allowing men to wear skirts, as you saw in that video. If it makes them feel good, right? It's all about feeling good. Fun note, though, uh, last year, Virgin Atlantic lost a whopping $916 million. And Katie, I think... They just want to lose some more money. And wh what happened to the good old days when people just got paid for doing their jobs and not what? flaunting their sexuality? Hey, David, it's about I'm the sorry, flair. Just, I'm sorry. The flair. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, not sorry. <laughs> okay. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. Yeah, yeah. Speak <laughs> speaking of companies going woke to appease, oh, Lord, M&Ms. They're introducing a new spokes candy to promote acceptance and inclusivity, and I'm sure diversity, I introduce the purple M&M. I'm the new M&M's candy. Do I have what it takes? I want to be the best, or even pretty good. Would be great. I'm a little unsure, I have to admit. Just be yourself. And you can do Man in the plant seems to think I can. Thank you, Mr. Plant Man. No I think it's time for a big sweeping pan. I'm just gonna be me. I'm just gonna be me. Nothing else I can be but a purpley peanut shaped chocolate candy. She's really peanut shaped. Why? <laughs> Why? Why? Well, as you can see, the new purple M&M is featured wearing long eyelashes, white combat boots. Um, you know, it doesn't matter. People are going to still buy them anyway, no matter what. Um, they could represent whatever. But they say the new character represents acceptance and inclusivity. Keen self-awareness, authenticity, and confidence are the driving forces behind purple's charm and quirky nature, end quote. M&M's first introduced its red and yellow candy characters back in 1954 and have since added many others starting in 1998. Katie, they're M&M's. Yeah, they are M&M's. Straight up sugar, not good for your health. I don't care what color you are, just don't eat them. Problem solved. Pithy. Well, since we're talking M&M's, millions of fans of the chocolate candy are apparently just now finding out what the initials are for. So back in 1941, the hard shell chocolate candy was invented by Forrest Mars Sr. and Bruce Murray. In the 1930s, Forrest thought of the idea of, for the iconic treat after noticing uh, customers eating chocolate buttons with a hard shell to prevent melting. He joined forces with Bruce, who's the son of Hershey's chocolate president, William F.R. Murray, to develop the idea. And the fun fact about naming 
uh, M&Ms became a hot topic on social media as millennials claimed it was very cool to find out the iconic candy was named after its founders. Katie, and as they say, the more you know, are, are you a plain or peanut M? Uh, first off, <laughs> wow, mind blown, millennials. This is, mm, this shows we can't use critical thinking skills to just, wow, whoa, that's so cool. Anyway, I'm a peanut, because at least peanuts will give you a little bit of protein, a little bit of fat there, give you a little sustenance, not as much sugar. I'm more of a dark chocolate Ooh. person. I, mm. Do they make okay. dark chocolate M's? They make dark chocolate. They make, they make okay. all the things. Everyone's going to say peanut butter. Let us know. Peanut butter, is that where you're at? Just, Pumpkin you know spice what? M's. Mm. Okay, never mind. I, I, we've got to move on. That wraps up this segment. More to come next time. Pumpkin spice. <laughs> all right. Make sure you uh, smash that like button if you're watching us right now on the social medias. And uh, please send us your feedback, including what m M&M you like, at stayeducated.org. For David and myself, thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and as always, thank you for supporting this show. Until next time, stay educated.